This is a tutorial to model the part 9999901 Rev2. Now you can recognize that the, this is going to be made from the blank that's uh, on your previous um, modeling project, but there's quite a bit more features on here. But we're going to go ahead and uh, build this in the order in which we machine it. So we're going to go and make our, we're going to basically repeat the work we did modeling the blank. That should be quick, uh, good exercise for those that are new to Fusion and easy for those that have been around the block a bit. So we're going to sketch. Uh, we're going to sketch on the front plane. We're going to sketch our rectangle and we're going to dimension it. That's uh, four inches, not 40, four inches long by one inch 900 high. We're going to finish that sketch. We're going to extrude that sketch by a distance of 0.75 inches, which gives us our volume. So it's the same dimensions our previous project was uh, from. Now let's go back to our drawing. So let's go to the geometry. We're going to make this quarter inch wide slot that's 375 thousandths deep. And it's dimensioned from the back. So we need, to, we need to dimension exactly how the drawing is for our results to be good. Okay, so we're going to sketch on the end of the plate. We're going to zoom out and draw a rectangle. Make sure it's contacting the top edge, like so. Again, we're just doing an estimation of it. And then our dimensions are going to tell it where, how far away it is. So we're going to go from the back edge. That dimension was 0.25. The slot itself is 0.25 wide. And from the top edge to the bottom edge of the slot was 0.375. We can hit Finish Sketch. I like to go to a 3D view of this, this at this point. Make sure your sketch has a little padlock symbol. We're going to do an extrude extrude on the inside of that shape. It defaults to making a new feature, which is not what we want. We're going to go through all, and we're going to flip the direction, and the red zone is what's going to be removed. And it changes the operation to a cut. We'll hit OK. We've now made our first feature. OK, so now let's put the uh, 2 times 1032 unified through one wall holes in this uh, face here. So we're going to go back to our model. Rotate it and we're going to look at the sketch in the same view that it is on the drawing. And we're going to go to create. We're going to take two, make two points. And we're going to make those points horizontal to each other. Another method would be to draw a construction line in between the two and make the construction line horizontal. We're then going to make our dimensions off the back side of the part, 0.25. And then from the side, which is datum C, we have 0.5. And then from datum C again, we have our other dimension is 3.125 or 3 inches and 125 thousandths. Okay, we should have a fully constrained sketch. We're going to hit finish sketch. Let's go ahead and look at it from a 3D view. And we're going to use the whole wizard. We're going to take the whole wizard and we're going to tell it we're going to do multiple locations and we're going to select our two holes. Now, it's going to use whatever was used last. Those are much bigger than what we're actually putting in the part. Um, but we'll fix that. So our hole type is going to be a simple hole. And our hole tap type is going to be a tapped hole. So our options is a simple hole, a clearance hole for a bolt, 
a threaded tapped hole or a tapered tapped hole, which would be only used really for pipe threads. So we're going to pick tapped. And then we're going to use a ANSI Unified Screw Thread. And you're going to go to the size. And we're going to scroll until we see the number 10. Okay, it's the number 10 uh, tap drill. Okay. Um, it's going to be defaulting to a cut tap. And then we want the 1032 UNF. Okay, so that's our thread pitch. Class 2B is fine. It's right-handed. And you can select whether you want to model the threads or not. This mattered more when the um, computers are slower. But if you check this box, it's actually going to model threads. If you don't, it's going to just do a cosmetic thread. Uh, we're going to leave it cosmetic. It's easier to measure off the uh, cosmetic uh, thread. And it's just going to show a hole here. Now the depth. It's actually through one wall. What we need is this threaded hole just to intersect uh, the cross holes that are going to go in for the front. But they're not in the part yet. So let's look at our drawing. Let's look at the dimension. So our part is uh, one inch, nine hundred thousandths wide, and the the cross holes call from the opposite side of the part. But if we subtract one inch, four hundred thousandths from one inch, nine hundred, um, there's a half inch of space here. So that's what we're going to do. Is we're just going to go to depth of the center of that hole, and then when we cut the cross hole in it, they'll line up. Okay, so we're going to go back to our model and we're going to put in uh, a distance of 0.5, half an inch or a hundred thousandths. Last detail is this hole has a uh, chamfer or countersink at the top. We're going to go look at our drawing, see what the spec is on that. So the second line of our hole feature is a countersink a 240,000 diameter with a 90 degree angle. So we can change the hole type to include the countersink and then on our countersink diameter put 240 thousandths and that'll make our countersink the proper depth. And we hit OK. And we're done with our feature. All right, next step. We finished the features on the side. Now let's do the features on the front. Okay, we're going to do a sketch on the front face. And I suggest we do our hole patterns first. So we have several holes on the drawing. We have a pattern of four times quarter inch. That's one, two, three, four. And we have a two times it's this size and two times it's this size. We'll actually lay out the centers of all of them and then we will apply whole features to them in order in which the uh, dimensions are. So we, we have quite a few dimensions we need to work with, but we've got a total of eight holes. So here's how we're going to start. We're going to go back to our point command and we're going to just draw eight points. They don't have to be accurate at this point. All right. Now in this case, I'm going to use the method I was talking about where we take and connect the two furthest ones and we can create a construction line out of that. And we force this to be horizontal. If it isn't already, it is on my case, give me an error. Okay. And if you hit escape, I can still drag this point around until I snap it to the construction line and it'll try to put a coincident um, relationship. Okay, so those are all in one line and they have to all be in the same plane. So let's repeat that for the top.
So we've got those all in a line one way, and then they need to be in line with each other vertically. So we could either draw some more lines, or we can align them vertically. And the advantage of doing all these relationships first, when we apply dimensions to it, we don't need to apply that many of them. Okay, so let's go back and look at our drawing. How far is the center of these holes from the top edge of the part? According to our drawing, it's 900 thousandths. Let's go back. We're going to put a dimension from the top of the part to our center line. Click on the outside of the model. It's good to click away from features so you can actually see the number. 900 thousandths. So we've now applied that dimension. Now let's see how far this row of holes is from the top of the part. According to drawing, it's 1 inch 400 thousandths. There you go from the top edge to our horizontal line. Put a point in, point 0.4 or 1 inch 400 thou. Okay, so we have our whole pattern spacing in the one axis. Now we need to go from datum C, which is this side, and do each uh, set of holes. So the first one from here to this edge is half an inch or 500 thousandths. So we're going to go from the left edge to the bottom hole. We're going to set that at 0.5 and it moves the ones that are vertically aligned with it. Now we just go down the line and put our dimensions on the rest. So we've got uh, the next pattern is an inch and a half or 1.5 or 1 inch 500 thousandths. Okay, and the next set, according to our drawing, is 2 inches and 190 thousandths. And our last set of holes is uh, 3 inches, 125. So our cross holes are going to line up with the first set of holes, soles, and the second set of holes. All right, so we have a fully constrained sketch. We're going to hit finish sketch. We are going to use this sketch more than once. We are going to model the sets of holes to the appropriate size for their callouts. So if we look at our drawing, we have a four times pattern that's 250 thousandths. So that diameter tolerance is in our general tolerance block, which is uh, looks like it's plus or minus five. So it is a a pretty standard tolerance. So let's go back to our model. And you can either draw a simple hole, a uh, circle, or you can use the hole wizard. Either way, but we're going to go to the hole wizard and we're going to do a hole type. We're going to do multiples. We're going to do the uh, simple hole and it's not going to have any threads. And it's not going to be size for bolt clearance because we want to type in the value. And the drill point's not going to matter because we're going to go all the way through, but um, if you did need it to uh, have a flat bottom or go to a specific point, you could do that. And our four points are here, 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 and here. Now, obviously, these diameters are too big. We're going to put our diameter down here on the simple hole of 0.25, and, oh, 0.25, and they shrink up. Okay, and instead of going a distance, we're going to go through all, which means it's going to go all the way through the part. Okay, we'll select OK, and that's our first pattern. Now, by default, when you make a feature off a sketch, the sketch becomes invisible. Invisible. We can make it visible again by clicking on the eye icon next to the sketch. So, sketch what I have is sketch seven. 
Now this set of holes and this set of holes have different callouts, so we're going to make them different diameters. So we go back to our sketch and let's look at the first one on the left. We've got a hole that has to be 249 thousandths, 5 tenths. That's a, the biggest it can be. And the smallest it can be is 248 thousandths. So what size do we model it? What really matters is you put the right size drill or reamer in the machine. But best practices for modeling this is that you would model it on the average of the tolerance. So it would be halfway between these two numbers. So let's do that. We take uh, 249.5, which is the largest size it can be, and we're going to subtract 0.248. You could put the zero, but it won't matter. And that is the difference of the tolerance. So that hole has a, uh, a thou and a half tolerance. We're going to divide that by 2 and add it to the smallest size. So plus 0.248. And that gives us the number that's halfway between these two numbers. This is the size we're going to make it. For the purposes of the modeling, we can just copy this number by right clicking and copy. Go back to our model. We're going to do another hole. It's going to be a simple hole. We pick the two locations. The parameters should default from the previous. But we're going to put in the, the size that we calculated the hole should be. So it should be 248 thousandths, 7 tenths, and 5 million. We're just going to do that. Okay. So that's one set of holes. Now we're going to do this set of holes. Let's go back to our drawing and figure out what the median of the tolerance is here. So we have a 252 to 251. Okay, so if I take 252 and subtract 251, there's a thousandth tolerance on this hole. Pretty tight. You can hold it with a reamer though. So we're going to take that, divide it in half. And the mean of the tolerance is 5 tenths. We add that to the smallest number, 0.251. And we get 251 thousandths, 5 tenths. We're going to copy that number or write it down. And we're going to go and use our, our hole wizard again. We'll select our two holes and put in our new value. So the way these holes are tolerance, these four on the outside are clearance, pretty much clearance holes for a quarter inch. Uh, these two are a press fit and these are two uh, slip fit if you were to put a quarter inch pin in those holes. All right, so we have all eight of those holes established. They're at the mean of their tolerance and we're going to hide the sketch now because we don't need it anymore. If we look at our drawing, our choice is to make the pocket over here on the right or we can cut these steps. I'm going to go ahead and work on the front view. Make the pocket first. So we're going to go to Fusion and we're going to sketch on the face. And we're going to use the rectangle tool to make a pocket. Okay, so we got a rectangle. It's already uh, horizontal and vertical relationships there. Now let's dimension it. Now the width of our pocket is 1 inch 135. So let's dimension that. 1.135. Yeah, that's the width. And if we look at the height, the height is 1 inch 400. Four. Okay, so that's our our the size of the pocket. Now we need to position the pocket. So if we look at our drawing, it is from datum C, two inches, six hundred twenty thousandths. So 
So from this edge to datum C, There we go, 262. Now, how far is the part from datum B? From datum B, the, it is a quarter inch from the top edge of the pocket to the edge of the pocket, or 250,000. So we go from the top of the part, top of the pocket, drag over, 0.25, and there we go. We have a fully constrained sketch. You notice I have not put the fillets on. You can, but you may have to redimension this. I'm going to put those on later as a different feature. Okay, so we're going to hit finish sketch. 